Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series and we are going to be doing a tier list for the early game military technologies kind of as a way of talking about these technologies. Um, in this video we are going to be you know uh, first talking about some background ideas, glossing over some of the things we've talked about in the other two videos but definitely mentioning them and also uh, you know talking about these texts of which there are uh, four tier 1 texts, all the tier 2 texts, and the first line of tier 3 texts. These are the ones we are going to be talking about um, at least somewhat briefly uh and so uh, you know it's not a deep dive on these as much as ranking them now talking about um kind of the background ideas um uh, it's going to be important for us to evaluate stuff on the basis of prioritization or this is how we are ranking not on the basis of power level in a vacuum the reason for this is you're going to get all the techs the opportunity cost of getting one tech is not getting another tech the opportunity cost of getting one tech is getting another tech uh getting that tech before the other tech and so uh, our evaluation is not on based on power level it's based on prioritization so that's thing one and thing two you don't want to research ahead of time so this means if you have in the early game generally speaking uh so if you have tier one tech on research you generally don't want to go for tier two tech and if you have tier two tech on research you generally don't want to go for tier three tech unless you start with in the best tech bracket in the game which is usa belgium uk france and prussia i think are the the ones who started the best tech bracket in which case it's a little bit better um and you, you there's another exception if you are trying to slingshot ahead of time uh by researching up to 10k and and then not finishing a tech and just waiting until you natural spread um, the text from the previous thing. But we're not going to discuss how to do that because we uh, have talked about that in the other two videos. So for military tech specifically, military tech, uh, and this is the, the bracket which I feel the least confident on my rankings, uh, but we're still going to get into it, the least confident because 1.5 changes do change things. Uh, but I think military tech, when I last did this, um, was not very good and you didn't want to research it early for a variety of reasons. And I think in 1.5, that's even more exacerbated. So I think that these techs, just generally you don't want to research early. Um, and there's a few reasons for this. One, and the very big one, is that uh, military tech is really, really good at turning a war that is very close that you would have lost into a war that is close that you would have won. However, you shouldn't be fighting close wars for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that they are very, very, very expensive. And let's just jump into a game real quick. Uh, and two, a lot of the places you want to conquer, a lot of the places you want to go for, like a South Africa, like a Borneo, uh, these are soft spots anyways, uh, because when you attack a recognized power, which are generally the people who have a lot of strength, this is the Divergences mod, by the way, which is why the countries are crazy, um, but when you attack countries that are really, really strong, um, you have to pay way more infamy. Infamy uh, scales on the basis of, uh, like if we do conquer the Falcons, and we go and take a look at some of this, uh, it scales on the basis of them being recognized, and you have to pay more if they're a great power and so you don't want to fight great powers because you have to pay more infamy for whatever it is you want and also some of the best places are going to be not great power places anyways they're going to be like uh, taking provinces off of china and taking provinces in south africa that have gold and also subjugating like South African uh, or South American miners. And so um, generally speaking, the, the wars that you want to be fighting are soft wars anyways in the early game. Uh, and also uh, the, the GPs very often, um, if you wanted to fight them and you're not a strong start, often they will just be able to overwhelm you. They will be so much stronger than you that one tech is not going to make a difference. It's like the techs only make a difference if it is close and you would have lost and then you would have won otherwise, in which case it's huge. Huge. So in the context of multiplayer, which is not really what we're talking about here, all these techs are way, way better, and the techs start to get really good at multiplayer. But if you're not playing multiplayer, you just dodge the hard war. You don't declare these hard wars. You look to fight them later on. You look to build up a base. You look to expand in South uh, Africa and, you know, Borneo and this type of stuff. And you don't look to pick hard fights in a general sense. And also, when you do get hard fights against the AI, you can really lean on, uh, you know, decrees and, like, having enlistment efforts and doing this sort of stuff, which the AI does not utilize to the degree that you can. Um, and so often you can win wars that look really difficult uh, also as a result of uh you know outmaneuvering them and this sort of stuff also uh if you get in a war that you are slightly losing um very often you can just play very defensively the reason for this is uh generally speaking the pms on like all the military stuff are sharply oriented to defense now the thing i am less confident of is 1.5 changes this in a little bit um in the sense that here let's jump back into the browser 1.5 changes this a little bit in the sense of that uh navy is a lot more important and having a weak navy sometimes you can like lose if you have uh, uh an empire that's spread out uh being weak 
navally is really rough. But generally speaking, it is pretty easy to have really strong defense if you're fighting entirely an all defensive war with all infantry and you switch all your conscripts over to infantry. Um, you can defend with inferior technology uh, pretty, pretty comfortably. Like when we have line infantry and they have, you know, cannon artillery, uh, well, we'll have similar like offense and defense. Same with like mobile versus skirmish, but they will also have mixed in, they won't be 100% cannons, right? They will have mixed in uh, regular infantry. And so they will generally have to kind of climb uphill to fight, uh, you know, a battle. So the war just generally favors the defender. And so, um, you know, you're not picking a fight with someone who's really strong. Uh, and then you, on defense, you can often defend with like inferior tech. Um, and so as a result of like kind of this way of thinking, we are really not going to go for a lot of these techs early. Instead, we're just going to prefer to build up a big economy. That's another thing is like you can just get a bigger stick by getting a bigger economy and just having more units. And so, um, you know, these techs are really, really not good in the early game. Also, early game, you have really high priority on a lot of society and uh, industrial techs. And remember, our metric is prioritization, right? And so because you can prioritize these other techs, you are very rarely going to be touching these techs unless you are looking to do something really specific or you you're looking to like RP and like just mix it up with GPs from the very outset or maybe you're doing like a high infamy France start where you just like open with transfer the EIC something like this but outside of these contexts you're not going to research the military uh, military text very actively with kind of one exception which we're going to put into A tier and so um, or kind of two exceptions but let's get into it army reserves increases your conscription rate and we're going to talk about artillery and Napoleonic warfare and line infantry these are kind of the first uh, tier one smatterings so we're going to talk about all of them and so uh, the first the thing to th well, it's actually maybe best to talk about them in this context, uh, which is that, you know, uh, artillery, the main thing that they are unlocking is cannon artillery, uh, which is going to have 25 offense and 15 defense. This is not going to be very good because the Curious Sir is, uh, you know, uh, a unit that you can use. And so we'll take a look at the tech tree uh, a little bit. Here, let's actually just jump into it now. So jumping into game and taking a look at the tech tree, um, we can see that, you know, the cannon artillery is going to be on this side now uh and we unlock cannon artillery over here and the unit is going to have 25 uh offense and tw uh, 15 defense the problem with actively researching this uh like kind of it's in, in its entirety at the moment with cannon artillery is that uh there's the presence of the courier sir which is going to be unlocked before then and this has a total of 45 stats uh and you generally don't want to pick hard fights so defense is more important and this has a total of 40 stats so as your second Dairy, you are never really going to want to use cannons at any point um, in, except in situations where you want to start a fight with someone who you're not way stronger than. Uh, so we're going to put cannon artillery in D tier. Um, uh, from line infantry, line infantry, it makes a little bit more sense to research uh, maybe, but uh, again, line infantry is going to give us an upgrade from 10-10, uh, uh, you know, that we have over here. And in fact, uh, off the basic or irregulars, which we can't even see that PM. And so um, this is going to be a pretty substantive upgrade, but for everyone who starts without line inventory, you're really going to need to be researching stuff like stock exchange and like getting towards railroads. And so, um, and you're not going to, it's not going to be worth it to like really start a fight by just going for line infantry first. I can't think of a single exception. Maybe there's one that someone can think of. If you could think of one, put it in the comments where you are going to forego like all this other tech you're behind on uh, in favor of going line infantry just to win a war early. Uh, but this is a pretty significant upgrade because line infantry upgrades uh, from a plus or a 10 offense 10 defense to uh 20 offense 25 defense this is probably the very biggest upgrade in the game but it comes at a point in the game where you are really really strapped for like there's so much stuff that you're prioritizing over this and so we're also going to put this in c tier so we have this in c tier i think we said d but we meant c and then we have uh you know army reserves it's going to unlock extra supplies which actually is a decent mobilization option this is kind of uh present in 1.5 i had forgotten that this was on here so we're actually might rank this up a little bit into C tier. We had this in D tier kind of in our practice run, but um, extra supplies is going to be nice, but there's going to be other techs you want to research at this point in time. Uh, and then we have extra conscriptable battalions, which is, um, you know, it's an okay modifier. It's good on defense, but like, again, you, you don't know when you're going to have to fight. Uh, and if you research a tech 
and then you don't end up using it immediately, uh, that's a really big problem because you're going to get the tech eventually, right? But when you research a production tech, um, you immediately get the benefits of it, right? And so if I research the production tech instead of the military tech, I don't get attacked, uh, then uh, it's way better. If I research the production tech and then I end up getting attacked, obviously I would have rather had the tech that would have helped me in this small context of a close war where I'm just barely losing because GPs will roll over you if you're like playing someone really small anyways, so it's not going to make a difference. Um, but like uh, overall, the, the, the production tech is guaranteed to help you. And so this is decent on defense. Extra supplies is interesting, um, but it's not going to be, uh, you know, good enough uh, for this. But we are going to put that in C tier as well. And next up, we have, uh, you know, why is this? Okay, this is just called something else in this mod. This is mobile artillery. Uh, the Whatever this is can't hurt you. It's not real. Um, but this is mobile artillery, uh, which is going to bring you up your cannons to 30 offense, 15 defense. Um, you know... Uh, you know, I had this in a higher tier, but actually just looking at it, I, I think that this is probably also in C tier. The reason being is mobile artillery, this 30 offense, 15 defense, that's a total of 45 stats. Uh, I think we're still going to prefer Curious Sears in here uh, as your secondary PM. And so um, you have to maintain a balance between infantry and X. The X can either be cavalry or, uh, you know... Um, cannons and i think uh in this case uh, you would i mean mobile artillery does also give you it does unlock lancers which are a little bit better than curry series especially on offense but like uh they have a total of 50 on the stats but like this is not going to be worth actively researching just to do an offensive war you should just pick a war that's not as hard and so this is the mobile artillery not whatever this says okay the shout out to the mod really nice mod but uh Kind of cramp in our style so let's jump back into the browser and kind of uh, distribute uh, these guys accordingly uh to where they belong and so army reserves initially i was going to put this in d tier we're going to put it in c tier at kind of uh, uh uh maybe a little bit of higher rate uh because plus 10 percent offense and defense um you know when you have 20 of the stat it's only representing like a plus five increase or sorry the plus two increase uh on, on you know offense defense but it affects both sides it affects both the infantry and the cavalry um and the pm uh is also giving you extra morale it's kind of okay uh so we're going to put it kind of like in the higher tier of uh the c tier which is Text you very, very rarely will research, but still occasionally sometimes do. We're going to put this back here. We're going to put Napoleonic... Um, we're going to put this behind there. And we're going to put Line Infantry also uh, down pretty low here. We're going to put it uh, behind, uh, you know, Napoleonic. And so, actually, it's probably... Well, every tech, every country that doesn't start Line Infantry really needs to research other stuff. And so, like, these texts, you just... I, it's really hard to imagine situations where you're researching them, but they actually do upgrade your military quite a bit. And so this is why we're not putting them in D tier, because they do make a, a, a pretty big progression. And if the metagame evolves, you know, if the AI mixes it up a lot more, and is much, much, much more, much more aggressive, these PMs might become, start to become reasonable. Um, and so, okay. Next up, we have hydraulic cranes, which is actually kind of an interesting one, because hydraulic cranes uh, gives you extra levels on your, your your ability to build boats. And so uh, there are some instances where you uh, don't have convoys and you need convoys for what you're trying to do. And so being able to build those extra boats when you only have like one uh, instance of a thing is going to be useful. This is also a really early game tech though. So we're going to generally not favor this, but I think that you're going to uh, need the dockyards a little bit more often than you need the extra military uh power um and so we're going to put it ahead of army reserves because i think there's more situations where you just need convoys um than there are situations where in the early game you're going to be researching military tech because you want to actively fight someone if someone declares on you then that kind of sucks uh, but like Someone has to barely be stronger than you and declare on you for these texts to be really good researches. Next up is Screw Frigates, which is actually um, kind of, if we jump back into the browser, or if we jump back into the game real quick and take a look at where Screw Frigates is, which is now on the opposite side of where it used to be, um, Screw Frigates kind of at the end of tier two. And so often when you kind of have a lot of these T2 texts researched, uh, Screw Frigates is going to be interesting because Screw Frigates actually does something that's pretty nice, which the PM is not way better on, uh, you know, steamships uh, uh, for military shipyards and reinforced wooden ships, but it does change the ownership to capitalist ownership. And so this is something uh, that's actually like economically substantive. And so, you know, if you are not 
not planning on fighting a difficult fight, which you generally should not be at this phase of the game, uh, because there's a bunch of soft targets that are good, um, and then, you know, kind of when you are trying to research the tier 2 techs out and finish them for the purposes of getting to the tier 3 techs without suffering a malice, Screw Frigate is going to be one of the better ones to research. And so uh, it will earn itself kind of the top of C tier, uh, being the very best of the, you know, not very good techs which there's going to be a lot in here. Uh, Power of the Purse is one that's a bit interesting. It will help you recruit up faster. Um, you know, uh, when you research it for the Navy, it is a tier two tech though. And I think that you don't really look to turn a corner too much in Navy um, early game. Uh, and you instead prefer to like turn a corner uh, when you are already researching the other stuff. And so we're going to put that, uh, you know, down here. Next up, we have general staff. So let's jump back in the game. Let's jump back into the game and kind of quickly take a look at Screw Frigate, or sorry, um, Power of the Purse. This plus three. Oh, it's not even plus four. It's plus three uh, max level. Um, but this gives Power of the Purse gives it plus ten a naval base max level, uh, and also Power of the Purse, which is going to give a little bit, uh, you know, on morale loss and damage. Uh, but it's going to you're really going to want to be able to recruit up faster once you start getting into these deeper um, navy techs. Next, but next up we have one of the better PMs in terms of making your army better, and that. Is is um where is it this is like uh the fact that they flipped this like left to right has got me all sorts of confused sometimes uh but that's skirmish infantry skirmish infantry is a pretty big upgrade uh from you know your general infantry and it's going to be uh you have to use the uh, regular infantry and so upgrading uh you know well so here's the thing these are going to be better on defense and often you want to upgrade military actively when you want to do something offensive and so uh in that sense it's, uh it's better to upgrade can the cannon line but in the sense that the infantry line is going to be guaranteed a part of your army and it's going to be a bigger proportion of your army it's better to research the infantry line but that's one thing is they divorced the lines they're used to in 1.4 there used to be a main line in 1.5 now there it feels like there are split lines but general staff is going to be a pretty big up, uh, upgrade from 20 to 25 to instead 25 35 uh with that defense coming up way way bigger and so if you have a strategy that involves a war where you're specifically just going to hold the line for an extended period of time and then uh, uh, advance, or you are declaring independence, um, then this one can be really good. One problem with uh, general staff, though, is very often the situation we're talking about is like some sort of independence war, which kicks you out of the market, which you might lose access to ammo. And so you probably need percussion cap to have natural spread to you, or I researched it yourself for general staff to really, really be that appealing. But um, we are still going to rate general staff in B tier, which is going to be very high for military tech. Uh, so let's jump back into the browser and kind of take a look at it and put it in there. So we're going to put it in B tier. Next up, we have Logistics, which if I'm not mistaken, um, gives you a little bit more conscription rate. This is one that's basically you never actively research. We're going to put it in D tier. Next, we have Fieldworks, which is actually a really interesting one. I think you could put this at the back of C tier, uh, but we're going to put it in D tier. And the reason for this is uh, Fieldworks gives you a little bit of extra defense. Um, in instances where it's natural spreading to you and you find yourself in a really rough war, I actually think you specifically do research Fieldworks then. Um, you know, if you find yourself a target of a uh, big war uh, and it happens to be natural spreading to you um, then you will get it in time for it to actually be useful and it just straight up gives you defense to be fair this is also true with these pms now as you can upgrade units as you are fighting in the middle of a war we're going to put it at the very front of d tier where it's contextually something that you want shotgun just gives you a slightly better pm um, but you are not going to have that many cannon foundries anyways. Like, it's going to be virtually zero, uh, but we're still going to put it ahead of logistics. Well, actually, maybe it doesn't go ahead of logistics, because logistics, I could imagine a scenario where you want that extra conscriptable battalions, um, but, like, it helps your economy, but you probably only have one or two uh, artillery uh, plants anyways, and so this is going to be really, really small. We're actually going to put it behind logistics. And next up, we have Percussion Cap. Uh, percussion Cap, uh, you research when you have natural spread, uh, you know, uh, general staff uh, and gotten skirmish infantry. And so um, very often, if you want to specifically secure yourselves or you have a lot of sulfur in instances, this gets a little bit better. Or you want to secure yourself uh, because you are going to be fighting 
this is a very, very specific uh, scenario where you are expecting to fight uh, someone with whom you are importing, uh, you know, the ammo, because you can just import ammo to make this work uh, on a temporary basis until you natural spread. This is going to be a situation where, for strategic reasons, you want to have your own supply of ammo. And so we're going to put this behind hydraulic cranes. I still don't think this situation comes up very often, uh, but it does occasionally. All right, so next up we have triage and rifling. Uh, and so let's jump into the game and kind of take a look at those real quick because I think triage is one of the better ones. Uh, but taking a look at rifling, rifling is going to give you a better PM. Um, it, notably for both rifling and uh, uh, for smoothbores, I believe both of these move you off of being, uh, what is it, merchant guild ownership to capitalist ownership. So this is something uh, that's somewhat substantive. They are better. These PMs also do produce... You could... <laughs> The problem is, is like, um, the amount of uh, cannons and small arms that are demanded overall is just so, so small relative to the size of the rest of your economy that this is, like, just not that substantive. But you could maybe try and export a little bit more if you get rifles early, but it's still not worth researching early. Uh, but we do have triage here. Uh, okay. And uh, triage unlocks first aid, which is, uh, I'm actually a pretty big fan of plus 20% recovery rate. I think this is a pretty strong modifier, and the inputs, um, the the inputs are fine. Uh, you know, you, it's going to take fabric and liquor. Uh, you actually kind of do like modern nursing, which we are going to talk about a little bit more, I think, um, in terms of the inputs, because tools and opium is a preferable input. Uh, but getting 20%, uh, you know, reduced, this is going to be good even if you're, uh, you know, I think this is better, even if you're fighting really weak countries, uh, you're going to prefer the recovery rate uh, a little bit more than just getting more stats, I think, because it negatively, I think overall you will take less casualties with the recovery rate, and so this would be preferable, in my opinion, um, to researching uh, like something like even general staff. Uh, however, often you research this specifically because you are trying to clear out the tier two text. So, you know, this is one of the better ones where you're trying to clear out the two tier two text. I think it's a little bit be better than Screw Frigate, but it's much the same idea where you're researching it for the purpose of you want to research into the tier three text um, is going to be the main idea. Notably, uh, this does not apply to uh, what will be your, when you're fighting countries way smaller than you what's going to actually be the biggest cause of casualties is probably going to be attrition this doesn't apply to attrition which is weird it should apply to attrition but it doesn't and so um don't think don't get this thinking you're going to suffer less attrition because that's not how it works and so uh let's put that in kind of the back of b tier uh will be where we will have it uh, in uh for this one and for rifling uh the rifling is going to be a little bit better than uh you know the the cannons one because you are going to use a lot more small arms the small arms uh, pm is also better it is something that uses hardwood so maybe you try and export this a little bit aggressively and i'm underestimating that as a strategy um but okay next up we have the pride and joy of the early game military techs which are gantry cranes and ironclads and and to jenna cole and to some extent i'm uncertain about how strong my evaluation is for these these are the ones that I'm least confident in my evaluation on, um, but I do think they're they're quite good, and I think that you know Navy is a lot more important now. And what it comes down to is how important is Navy really? Uh, but what gantry cranes and ironclads allows you to do is allows you to swap on over to the steamship stuff. Now this unlocks industrialized port, but it doesn't unlock uh, you know the industri the ability to get steamships. So gantry cranes will always come second, but often you research this as a pair. Uh, you will often go ironclads first, and ironclads will. Oh, does this affect the this this mod might affect the mm, this mod might affect things uh but it unlocks steamships uh for shipyards so now you can produce steamships um it unlocks steel holes and i think that what this mod does i'm not 100 percent sure this is in vanilla so apologies for this uh but i think that steam trawlers are actually in vanilla i think they're on gantry cranes um if i'm mistaken someone please let me know in the comments or i'll find out soon enough uh, on my own but um the whalers and this one i believe are normally under gantry cranes and we unlock ironclads here though which ironclads are considerably better than the other things so we have 50 and 50 
Uh, and if we take a look, uh, you know, kind of scrolling all the way up, all the way up, uh, to, not frigates, to dockyards from Man of Wars, which are going to be the heavy ship, 25-25. So that is the biggest military difference we have in any of these, and it's going to jump it up to 50-50. And so um, if you are looking to mix it up uh, with the great powers, especially because one of the ways they wreck you is by raiding your convoys, um, you know, your ability to defend stuff, land on them, crush their navy, all this stuff. If you are ter looking to start a fight with a great power or this sort of thing, uh, having a really strong navy, I think, is way more important than, in particular, having uh, a strong, uh, you know, even primary or secondary PM. I think the navy might even be more important, and so really, really bullish on these two. They also give you a pretty good economic jump, because if you are trying to um, de-peasant your pops, um, fish is actually a great thing, because it only costs 200 construction, uh, and so you might find yourself with a disproportionately high amount of fisheries, and the steam trawler PM is way better, um, and so this represents a decent economic bump both in terms of getting steam trawlers for both the whales and uh you know the the fish but also because uh you will be getting industrial ports uh which are going to give you quite a bit more convoys and infrastructure and so this is going to be really good jenna coal is often kind of nice if you are specifically looking to ramp something up for the immediate future because it takes a really long time to build ships um the increased training rate might be nice you might just wait for this to not spread though it's not going to be anywhere near Near is good. Um, we are going to put a Gene a Cool in C tier. We're going to put Ironclads in A tier because you kind of have to research Ironclads first. Um, I believe these in vanilla are on uh, Gantry Cranes. I think they shouldn't be on Gantry Cranes. I think they belong on Ironclads. So if that's a modification this mod, this mod has made, uh, shout out to them because I think this is better. Um, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But usually you research this in a paired way. Um, if this is the way, if they've swapped this for vanilla, this is like on a recent 1.5.8. Uh, thing that they've done this uh, in which case ironclads is much much better uh, and would maybe even go s tier if this is a vanilla thing but i don't think it is so apologies on that um but we are going to jump in and we are going to put gantry cranes at the very top of b tier um because you always research these as a pair uh and you go ironclads first uh i think you go ironclads gantry cranes uh because you can start building ironclads right away but you are dependent on getting the steamers uh before you can do anything in gantry cranes and so we're going to have it like that and then uh for jenna et Cole, uh we are going to have it at the uh kind of in c-ish tier we're going to put it behind uh percussion cap i think that more often you will research or you will research percussion cap to secure yourself strategically on the ammo again you're not going to build a ton of ammo things and so it's not really an economic tech it's more just a kind of a security not run a shortage tech so modern nursing, as we discussed earlier, you go from uh, you 20 percent uh, recovery rate to 40 percent recovery rate, um, and more and more recovery rate is more valuable than the previous recovery rate because of how math works. Uh, because when you have 100 percent or just regular recovery, uh, and you get an additional 20 per or actually. No wait, it goes the other way with the math. It's not minus 20 percent. Uh, yeah, it's plus 20 percent. So. Um, but the overall consumption profile is going to look a little bit better. Um, but I do think that it suffers relative to triage. You often research triage because you want to get into the tier 3 tech. When modern nursing is a tier 3 tech... So once you're already able to research modern nursing, you are not going to prefer. You're going to prefer to go Gantry Cranes Ironclads, and so I think even though modern nursing is a better tech, it's a stronger tech than triage. Well, obviously it's stronger tech than triage, but like in terms of how it how much it helps your military, um, I think that the jump from triage to modern nursing is better uh, than the jump from no triage to triage. But um, we are not going to put this as high because you will have a bunch of tier three texts to choose from and that devalues tria uh that devalues modern nursing relative to triage so we're going to put it ahead of uh we're gonna put it ahead of napoleonic right in here in c tier uh next up we have enlistment efforts which is not going to be a tech uh, that we research that often it allows for mass conscription maybe in the context of multi multiplayer this is good law uh but it's not very good in um you know vanilla and it also gives you extra conscription rate i think is the other thing so we're gonna put it in here um we have next electronic telegram which actually might give percentage to offense we're gonna jump in and just double check what exactly it does um because uh, we never research it, or we research it so little that we're not even sure. We're going to take a quick look. Conscriptable battalions on enlistment offers and mass conscription. And uh, Telegraph is going to be minus war exhaustion casualties. 
I think you should not be fighting a war where your war exhaustion from casualties is going to be a substantive decision on as to whether or not uh, who wins. Uh, but I suppose if you know that a war is going to be an absolute... Well, the AI is also not going to put... Yeah, the, this is just like one that like maybe is useful in specifically in the context of multiplayer. So you get, uh, you know ticked out slower uh, when um, people organize war goals in such a way that you can just tick below zero um, which is like a strong multiplayer consideration but outside the context of multiplayer we're going to put this at the very bottom of D tier this is terrible um, you're just uh, the, with the way the AI puts in war goals um, and also who you should be fighting at the point in time you're researching this type of stuff this is the absolute worst tech uh, I, the fact that I don't have it like memorized what exactly it does is a very strong indication that you know it's uh, yeah um okay so next we have breach loading artillery which is going to be a huge uh jump uh you know in terms of uh power level and is also going to be the jump in power level um that is most meaningful i think um overall and it gives you shrapnel artillery um at least for the which gives you uh plus 45 on offense um this is very strong and also 25 on defense artillery is stronger than um you know uh uh, what is it? Overall, you will get more stats from artillery than you do from, um, than you do from, what is it, uh, the infantry, uh, up until really late game. And so, um, you know, you see skirmish infantry, the total stats you have is 60, shrapnel, the total stats you have is 70, and specifically, it's gonna give you, like, a jump from 35 to 45, uh, which is going to be a break point that is actually quite a bit higher than the defense of skirmish infantry, and when you average, you know, kind of the this averaged with this uh it will be break even with skirmish infantry which i think is an important inflection point because i think that if you are going to mix it up with great powers often kind of the initial spot where you are going to want to do it is when you research shrapnel artillery uh and so i think this is a, a, a sort of inflection point tech that is like very important that when you get it in addition to the this is going to be when you start having a lot of 50 50 armies whereas you're not going to really build up the military much in early game and you generally start with mostly infantry armies in the early game and so uh but by the time you're getting shrapnel you might be building up to 50 50 uh and so i think that uh you know this goes right behind gantry cranes i think it's kind of the most researchable one and if you in particular are looking for a um timing uh with which to go after uh you know someone I think that this is one of the better ones if you're looking for a tech timing and this is one of the better ones to go after uh the ai general staff again you are going to have generally more infantry um it's also going to be one that's a decent shout but i think uh, after general staff you kind of just chill and you look to just uh fight against unrecognized powers rather than gps and i think afterwards um you know that's the thing and the repeaters gives you a slightly better pm um than rifling but uh on the repeaters specifically it's not jumping you from being merchant guild owned to capitalist owned which i think is kind of the most significant thing and again you're not going to have a ton of these industries anyway so we're just going to put repeaters um you know behind shell guns here and so this is going to be our tier list as we have it uh you know for the uh for the military tech in the early game again uh we are the reason that nothing's s is not because there's not a strongest tech uh but because we have to compare this to the context of you are going to be researching society and uh, industrial tax more in the early game they're going to be more important mainly because it's just not worth trying to fight the types of wars um where having a difference in military tech would be a substantive uh, substantive difference if you're way stronger you just club them no matter what tech you have and if you're way weaker you just cl clubbed anyways and so um it's specifically uh in the context of like multiplayer or really close wars it's going to be where it matters and so as a result all these techs suffer because you should just research society and industrial tech instead the standouts which i'm not that confident of and people can give their feedback i think are the going to be the the naval pms i think these ones are significant i think breach loading artillery is an interesting timing and i think skirmish is really strong because when you research skirmish specifically this will actually if you're evaluating stuff in terms of power level not prioritization this is probably tier one because this makes the biggest difference in your military's power level because the time you research it um, is going to give you, uh, you're probably going to be predominantly infantry and it's going to give you the biggest jump, you know, going from line infantry, which has a total of 45 stat to, uh, you know, skirmish, which has a total of 60. 
but I, I think that you, the way the texture of how the games play out is not going to be, you know, uh, something you want to go for. I think triage is uh, kind of useful in the same spot that Screw Frigate is, is because we're trying to get to the tier 3 techs. Um, and that's, I think, the primary use for these, but this does unlock PM that uses industrial people. You aren't going to have too many, like... Uh, you're not going to have that many of shipyards anyway, so it's really not going to be that big a deal. And triage is like kind of nice. Um, and then next up, we just have a whole bunch of just don't research this. Uh, there's some context in which you can like research some of these sea tier tech. You know, hydraulic cranes, uh, more port levels, percussion caps, securing the ammo, gene uh, coal. If you're trying to recruit up a navy really fast, army reserves. Uh, the army reserves what did that give oh it gives the supplies uh mobilization option now modern nursing is like relatively good but like it's at a time when you want to research other tech anyways um and then the actual like somewhat strong pms but in these but you're not going to want to research them because uh the you you don't want to you don't want to be trying to start fights at this point um with people who you can barely who you lose to or you barely beat Anyways, I hope this one has been interesting. Uh, if you thought so, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do the YouTube algorithm thing. And other than that, have a good one.